hello everybody um i wanted to look at what's going on globally with fishing um and actually uh you know the planet has been looking pretty much uh like you see on the satellite map for the past uh, few million years uh and even uh significant parts of it have been around in the same uh configuration for the last billion or so years uh and all of wildlife uh, and human uh, society and development has really uh, depended uh, basically on the water as well as the food uh, on the land. Um, and so it's likely that these fishing areas will probably be significant um, for the next, uh, certainly next hundred years and perhaps even a uh, few thousand years or even beyond. So. Uh, what we're studying, even if we're about 5% correct uh, or even 1% correct, we're really talking about the past million years or more um, and looking at how biology um, has developed um, over these vast time periods uh, of our planet um, and how that might affect just about everything uh, on our planet. So I'm really excited about doing this study. Um, I'm kind of embarrassed because it seems like basically no one has ever done this study, this work before. So, uh, what we're about to go through here, uh, excuse me, uh, I'm trying to help a friend of mine uh, move. Uh, but what we're about to go through here, uh, these maps, um, really has been available for uh, the past 10 or 20 years. Um, but uh, there really hasn't been. Um, kind of a comprehensive study so we're really going about this for the first time historically uh, sadly um, but it also means there's a huge opportunity um, to get involved no matter who you are or where you are on the world because we're looking um, at just about everything around the planet um, whether you're in the United States South America Africa Europe uh, India Asia Australia or some small island out deep in the Pacific, uh, there's always some kind of opportunity. Um, I just texted a friend the other day uh, who lives in Santa Cruz, California, and there's a river there that dumps a lots of dirty water directly into the ocean. And I've been talking a little bit with him about what we can do uh, to do just on a little stream. So there's probably a stream with tiny little tadpoles or fish wherever you are on the planet nearby you um, you depend on water and clean water especially so uh, we're gonna look at everything here this is primarily we looked at the uh, water study earlier that was the previous conversation I had uh, and I'll go back and look at that really quickly just so you can see there's just a vast amount of stuff that we've already accomplished uh, in terms of studying everything here. So this was primarily looking at the streams. You can see all the rivers that basically dump out into the ocean. Here is all the hydrological basins. Um, it looks like quite a lot. There's actually minor hydrological basins. And then even the rivers you can start to see. Here um, we outlined uh, quite a bit of the deep sea pathways um, for the fish. So what we're gonna try to do uh, essentially is map um, where the fish travel to um, typically and look at what we can do uh, to help. Um, and the one thing I wanted to emphasize, um, this isn't about regulation uh, necessarily, it's actually about going beyond regulation and helping the fish. So there's one side we can just say, hey, don't fish there. But actually what we wanna do is we wanna encourage helping the fish. So it's not that we don't, uh, you know, it's not that we wanna actually help the fish. So it, it's about improving uh, the situation not just regulation so uh, you'll see in all these maps there's just so many details I just wanted to show this really quickly in case you had a chance didn't have a chance to look at this this is the electrical study here uh, and here you can see the population uh, that are primarily involved and there's I really want to start with something super helpful um, and that really has to do with mainland what they call mainland China or mainland in general uh, and how we can use some of that here's a deforestation map and you can see how responsible uh, different areas are and we really need to emphasize the importance of the Philippines uh, in some of these discussions and you can see um, we've definitely gone through a lot and there's definitely a lot of boats out there um, so what I wanted to do is actually start with a map uh, that really gives us some hope um, rather than looking at 
all the significant problems. Um, I wanted to look at this map uh, first here. So uh, let me uh, do some things here to make this a little bit more uh, readable. I'm sorry about this. So we're going to zoom in. Uh, and what are we talking about here? So this is perhaps the world's most uh, largest fishing area. It's off the coast of China and actually off the coast of Vietnam. Uh, in particular is more is important but what I wanted to mention here is this blue region um, so what you can see is this shows a lot of hope because um, they're not just fishing along the coast so obviously everyone wants to fish along the coast because it's not only convenient but that's where a lot of the smaller fish and and bigger fish come in uh, from the ocean uh, to try to uh, breed and eat uh, things so but what is really promising here is that you can see that a lot of fishermen are actually going pretty far out to sea uh, they're not actually going all the way to the islands but they're actually going out to here uh, and fishing here um, rather than fishing directly on the coast um, Ho Chi Minh City you can see um, is a big part of that um, but it's really hard to get the full grasp of what's going on here um, and you can see actually Taiwan is extremely responsible um, for what has been happening in terms of the problems as well as mainland China. So it's, it's actually they shift the problems between Taiwan and mainland um, and even Hong Kong, right? So basically they're saying, oh, it's Taiwan's fault. Oh, it's China's fault. Oh, it's Taiwan. Oh, and that's basically how this works is that uh, everyone uh, needs to rethink about where they're fishing uh, carefully uh, and we need to really be cautious about fishing right along the coast um, and as I was thinking about this you know we need to think about a way to make it fun because obviously people probably prefer fishing along the coast because they can see the coastline it makes for a really fun experience it's not too far so we need to figure out a way uh, to work with everyone involved uh, but uh, really um, <laughs> all this depends on Vietnam um, and what I wanted to show you here is a couple of now I want to jump to basically the sad part of the story is basically certain areas have been completely outfished um, you can see this whole bay of Bengal basically all around India is not fishable that's because of the pollution essentially coming from the Ganges River here uh, and this goes out thousands of miles uh, and even one little particle can make a fish sick so you can imagine um, that this is a vast area uh, that basically is unfishable um, and you can see another area which really is sad is in the Mediterranean um, basically vast parts of the Mediterranean are no longer fishable um, and you can see uh, for example the entire Black Sea um, and no one in the Caspian Sea uh, and then also really sad is the Baltic Sea um, you'd think that the water would be pretty clean up here, um, and uh, but you basically see zero fishing going on here. Um, a lot of that has to do with oxygen in the water, um, but actually because of ice melt, you have a lot of fresh water that melts off of here because of the ice. Uh, it's significantly colder, uh, and the fish love fresh water as well, uh, mixed in with the salt water sometimes. Um, but uh, and, and then I wanted to also say this is not just an Asian problem you can see we're fishing all the way up onto the North Pole here um, it is disastrous um, and definitely Europe Europeans are very responsible uh, for the fishing situation and as you zoom in here uh, the problem even becomes more significant and you can see Spain uh, definitely is responsible uh, and off of the coast of France uh, and some other areas uh, and you can see definitely Italy um, in here they're trying to do fishing and they're probably just fishing like mad here because there's just nothing left um, and sadly look at what happened here um, they basically um, outfished everything uh, so uh, let's go look at these diagrams a little more carefully but I wanted to start with the hopeful thing of basically saying that um, look at there are people that are trying to do things reasonably um, out there um, so let's go through these maps and see what else we got to see. So up in the Arctic, um, sadly, they're doing quite a bit of fishing. Look at in Iceland, uh, even in Norway, um, they're actually doing everything right along the coast here. Um, and that is completely um, devastating thing. So you can see uh, what happened in the United States. Notice that all this is up into Canada. Let me show you that picture really quick. See if I can get back to a United States picture. Um, but uh, 
there's just so much information here. So what I wanted to do is look at this United States. So you can see in the United States, there's basically no fishing going on in any of the Great Lakes. That's probably because of water pollution uh, and also oxygen in the water, um, low contents of oxygen. But what they've done in Chicago is they backed up the river so that the river no longer can flow directly into uh, the Lake Michigan. So that cleaned it up quite a bit. Uh, you can actually even swim in the water and it's pretty, it looks clean, uh, but apparently there's no fish. And you can see all the fishermen have basically moved up north um, and they basically completely outfished all the way down to Florida. There is some fishing going on in here. Um, and the same thing goes on the west coast. I mean, there should be fish in these warmer waters, but they've basically outfished it. Um, and a lot of that is moving up the coast and you'll see it actually moves all the way up to Alaska. Um, and that's where the bulk of the fishing in the United States is actually done, is in Alaska. And you can see there's actually a very interesting way to collaborate with Russia. You see the Russian fishermen are going all the way across here. Now, I wanted to say an extremely insane story. Uh, I read the book by a famous guy that started, I think it was Bubba Shrimp Company or something. He has a book out. And he was really furious when he started the company out in, uh, it was, I'm not sure it was his company or another one, uh, but they started in the Seattle area and they found out that they actually, this is in the last 50 years, they completely outfished the Puget Sound area and had to start fishing up along the coast of Alaska. And they, as they started to fish along Alaska, guess what they noticed? They noticed Japanese fishermen. So they had to sail all the way from Japan to the United States to fish. And they started to have regulations to prevent Japanese from fishing. But you can see what happened is actually, this is Tokyo right here. They're actually fishing perhaps way out into the Pacific, deepest parts of the Pacific Ocean. And all that probably is still coming from Japan and still coming from Asia, unbelievably. So uh, that's a really weird thing. And I don't want to completely point the finger at Japan, uh, but you can see uh, as you look at some of these maps, let me get another one here. I um, can't really see it on the details here, but so basically, uh, they are trying to uh, do less fishing in Southeast Asia. But honestly, this is quite a lot of fishing going on. And as we look at these maps, let me zoom in. I'll bring this over to um, this other map, and you can see basically what has happened. So it is. It is a tremendous amount of fishing here. This is out of Shanghai. Uh, so it's likely that these fishing routes, you can kind of trace it where it's coming from. It's probably most likely Japan, um, but there's probably some weird way of getting around uh, from Shanghai. So this is just so much boats that it's likely that whoever is doing this fishing deep in the uh, Pacific, uh, basically all these boats out here, they're actually scrubbing the surface so you can see they actually have just completely scrubbed this area. They're completely scrubbing this area um, and basically trying to get every possible fish out of the ocean. This is what's really scary. I think there should be absolutely no fishing around Galapagos Islands. Uh, and Ecuador and Peru and actually Colombia Colombia doesn't realize it and Venezuela doesn't realize it, but a significant percentage of all the fishing going on in the Caribbean and through Panama here as well, they need to completely suction out this um, because uh, it's actually called the wildlife capital of Earth. Um, and the Galapagos Islands is extremely important. As you can see, we, as we zoom in, there's even more fishing going on there. They've tried to make it 100% protected, uh, but it really hasn't they they are able to go on the water so they're not able to walk on the land here uh, because this area is actually 100 percent protected wildlife area uh, but they are actually fishing in the area instead so it would be interesting to trace that down and find out what is going on there um, there needs to be some areas that are 100 percent protected uh, and it's likely um, that uh, some of those most important areas should be right in this area here as well as in the Caribbean. Uh, but sadly, um, anyway, so I wanted to look at one other thing that really sort of surprised me, which is about Africa. Uh, let's look at Africa here and India. Um, but let's look at this first. So you can notice that the entire Red Sea has no fish in it. There's a couple fishing boats in here, but they've actually just moved it over to here. It's probably because of oxygen. There's such a slight 
entrance here that there's not much oxygen in the water uh, for the fish um, but that also means there's major algae blooms and a lot of the algae will come in here and there's actually these will glow in the dark um, there's some really fantastic pictures of glowing in the dark water the water will like glow iridescent um, and it's really amazing you can put your hand in the water and there'll be like glowing water essentially uh, from the algae but you can see here um, basically uh, there's a couple sections uh, in the Middle East that really need to be thought about um, and um, anyway so let me just look at uh, before we jump into Africa let's compare that to Europe uh, before we start pointing fingers and saying Africa's doing a terrible job but um, basically you can see um, they're fishing everything here um, along the coast here uh, and Greece is a definitely a warning sign because there's no fishing or significantly less uh, by a factor of 10 times less fishing going on in Greece uh, but uh, all those small islands really help a lot um, so before we jump into Africa I wanted to look at India because actually um, India provides a gateway for the rest of Africa so it's uh, the problems in Africa are essentially prevented by what's are and even assisted by what's going on in India. So, what I'm trying to tell you is that uh, Indians uh, can actually help uh, Africans understand how to deal with the rest of Asia, uh, because you essentially have to go through, uh, well, the uh, the Bay of Bengal and the uh, Indian Ocean, right? So. On one side, uh, on one side of all this is uh, Africa, and the other side is Asia, and in between is India. So, how they fish in India really influences how they fish uh, in Asia, particularly for Africans uh, to think about. Um, so, let's look at Africa really carefully here. You can see actually that it's really a combination between South America and Africa, right? Um, and you see that quite a lot of this has actually, like in the United States, they pushed it down south. So a lot of the fishing just has been obliterated near the equator. Um, and basically, they're going further and further south. You see that also in Africa. So the equator runs right through here. And they're actually pushing it further and further south along the coast there. Um, so Angola and Nambia actually have a huge percentage of the fish as well as Senegal here uh, and there's this Cape Verde Islands I've seen some really blue waters out here uh, kind of that Caribbean blue color that you uh, imagine that is unbelievable you get some of that out in this area uh, as well as in the Caribbean you can see some of that here but uh, they're basically fishing uh, primarily in Trinidad and Tobago which is actually quite African um, so if you zoom in here on the map um, and you look at what's going on here. Uh, this is a live image, so it's not the exact same image as before. Um, people do fish uh, many thousand miles out into the ocean, and that is also from Africa. Uh, and you can see here, and then even getting down into Antarctica. Uh, but a lot of this needs to be rethought about uh, carefully. Um, so, uh, but uh, again, uh, you know, it may be that Africans just don't have the number of boats uh, that Europeans have, and that's why there's significantly more. Uh, fishing and as we zoom in here uh, you start to see even more fish boats uh, come in so uh, definitely <laughs> it's important to realize uh, that the situation uh, is different uh, in Europe simply because they got a lot of islands uh, but you can see along the coast here um, and then also in Nigeria uh, and this really is important because if they do fishing correctly uh, that means they're going to do the correct thing in the jungle too um, because really you can start to see the problem uh, in the ocean uh, almost uh, at the same time as you see the problem in the jungle um, so that's something to think about here as well so let me zoom out again uh, so you can see um, and I really want to emphasize for Africans Madagascar um, it's really really one of the poorest countries in the world um, but uh, it actually has some of the most important wildlife um, and what the Africans decide to do uh, between East Africa, this is the only island in all of Africa, so there's really a couple small islands here, um, but the fishing that goes on around Madagascar really will affect uh, everything. Remember, Japan uh, was fishing many thousands of miles into the ocean here, and you can kind of see how that all works. Uh, I mean, someone, this is coming from somewhere, um, and it's, uh, you know, perhaps Hawaii is being fished out by the United States, uh, and even Alaska up here is seriously being fished and if we zoom in more you can see so uh, but basically uh, this has got to be looked at carefully 
um, because as soon as you start regulating this, what happens is that they start fishing in this area. So you have to be careful uh, to control the fishing in this region because all of a sudden they start to fish in even worse areas that would be even more disastrous so um, Japan is part of the solution and part of the problem um, and likewise it didn't even show all the boats uh, as I zoom in here you can start to see uh, the significance of Korea as well and really North Korea is being completely honest here not fishing anything um, right and you can see almost everything being the fault of South Korea um, here um, and actually South Korea should be looked at very carefully uh, perhaps even before China uh, because as a percentage, you can see that uh, Korea is definitely doing something uh, a little bit out of bounds there. So, uh, and then Taiwan kind of reason it's so important here is because it's such a doorway uh, to the Philippines. And once we start moving, if all this is regulated, people will start fishing more in Manila. And if we zoom in, you can start to see uh, some different boats here and some things. Uh, but. Uh, hopefully this will give you an idea um, about some things um, but I would say one of the most important projects is actually working with Bangkok Thailand and making sure that this bay has more fish because basically what happened is that uh, this got polluted because of water right so these, these are high mountain regions and this all drains out to here uh, and on a live satellite imagery um, you can see how far uh, the pollution goes let me pause this so you can see that well it's gonna be hard to get the actual live satellite imagery and they probably image do some image processing to uh, remove some of the water pollution uh, but you can see um, this goes out at least a hundred miles and remember one little speck one little particle uh, can make you sick um, and that can happen to the fish so basically what happens here in India uh, is that there's basically no fishing going on at all along the coast here so if we are to uh, look at the live fishing map you'll notice uh, in India here, uh, the water pollution has been such a problem that they can't even fish. Um, I mean, there's no fish at all in the Arabian Sea. So it's likely that uh, you're even contaminated fish along the coast here um, just because these are major rivers uh, dumping highly polluted uh, you know, water into the ocean. So let, let's just look at that carefully around the world so you can see um, and I think they do the image processing again here, but you can see how thick it is and then all of a sudden it kind of drops off. But it at least goes, uh, the, the significant amount, I've seen the pollution go really far into the water here. And you can see uh, another example here. They don't show it here, but I've seen really bad pictures, um, live images on the NASA worldview. And it's really important to see um, how far this goes into the ocean. And Shanghai is definitely, I, I don't know what's going on right now, but it's definitely editing these images to make it look more blue but they just cut it off along the coast here but you can see this is heavy heavy dirt going into the ocean and other crop products because you can see this is all farmland in here if we zoomed in uh, this is essentially all farmland and the rivers uh, basically empty off into here um, and there's not going to be fish in here we can guarantee that um, and if it's not fish here the fish can get sick and it's just really far out into the ocean and um, it's hard to see on the live image but um, it, it, it would be good to see on some days so you can see that um, but uh, anyway let me pause this and I'll come right back to this discussion as soon as possible so there's just so much that I'd like to say. Um, one thing I wanted to mention is this, it's actually the pathways. So you can see there's a pathway here between uh, Japan and Russia, and then here between Russia and Alaska. And it's really important to protect these areas in particular um, because that's how the fish essentially travel uh, all around the world here. So uh, this happens all over. You can see um, <coughs> here there's kind of... Um, maybe there should be a pathway um, between Galapagos Island. Um, here you can see some more details about those pathways. Here it is particularly in Alaska. <clears throat> and then you can see there's definitely going to be a pathway here, but there's basically no fishing going on. Um, a lot of that uh, can be due to the water pollution. So here you see absolutely nothing going on in the Great Lakes. Think about how much fresh water there is here, and there's basically no fishing. So um, there's definitely a water pollution question here. This is perhaps one of the most important water studies in the world can be done right here in the United States. We are probably very much responsible 
um, for why there's no fishing going on in the Great Lakes, and we need to really study that carefully um, to see. One problem is they're trying to keep certain fish out of the Great Lakes, uh, like carp, um, for instance, um, and there's a, <clears throat> a particular variety, um, and they're trying to be careful to have a variety of fish uh, because they could restock the lakes uh, with certain fish that essentially eat all the pollution, but they want to have variety uh, because those fish will completely take over the Great Lakes, so they have to be cautious about that. Um, so there is kind of some <clears throat> complexity to it. Uh, but here, um, I can't emphasize how important uh, Denmark is because basically it's the gateway to the Baltic Sea. So what we do right here um, <clears throat> basically starts to get up into the Arctic as well as you can see how much fishing is actually going on uh, not really around London but on the north side because there's basically no fish. I was shocked uh, to see there was not a single boat in the water uh, off the coast of Ireland um, and uh, if you go out along here you'll probably see the same thing um, and it's just because the water is polluted essentially London dumps all their water and you can see some of that pollution here you can see some of the pollution there but they kind of edit that on the maps here um, and as an interesting project it would be very important to see uh, particularly in Italy because this all dumps pollution out into here and you're probably getting a lot of polluted water all in this whole bay um, but Milan because of the high mountain range here you essentially dump all that into Venice <coughs> and then it gets pretty polluted so these little pockets sometimes you won't see any fish in here simply because the water is too polluted <coughs> um, for, it, for it to be fished and that same thing what happens in Cairo is that basically the Nile River dumps all that dirty water and it essentially makes it unfishable all in North Africa, right? So <clears throat> if you look at North Africa, let's just jump over here to see no fishing. That's because the Nile River, <clears throat> there may be like one boat out here. Um, but basically that's uh, one of the major problems uh, to think about. So, uh, and let's just see here again, ah, the Red Sea, um, and you can see the Arabians uh, definitely have a huge say. Um, and I really wanted to emphasize uh, Shanae here, um, and particularly this gap between India Jaffna, right? So they would say, oh, the water's just too polluted. Um, maybe there's not enough oxygen. The fish just don't like it. But we really need to think about um, the fish would like it if the water was clean and the bacteria was edible uh, for them. So it may be that there's just other problems. And you can see uh, up here. So, and Yangon being a huge uh, factor. I can't emphasize how important Myanmar is in the future of just about everything for land based wild India has no wildlife left uh, compared to Myanmar and the discussion here is really how to keep uh, the wildlife uh, in Myanmar uh, and uh, that, that's a huge discussion so Steen anything else that I might have missed there's just so many details um, so again uh, you know we're looking at the entire planet right now so it's really a lot of information uh, to look at um, and it's probably going to be like this for a while so your time is going to be very helpful and whatever time you spend looking at this uh, you're actually looking at the entire planet um, and you're gonna understand some keys uh, that very few people uh, or um, you know only people that really, you know we really want to try to help out here so there's gonna be so many exciting things that I've learned personally from this so uh, I just wanted to thank everybody uh, and hopefully uh, if you have some ideas and thoughts I'd be glad to collaborate with you thank you so much um, so again, I wanted to thank everybody for looking at all these details. Um, we just looked at so many different slides, um, but I wanted to take this back uh, to the original pathways discussion. Um, so when you think about it, uh, a lot of these uh, little baby fish are gonna wanna be right along the coast. Um, so the question is not just like, a lot of what we looked at was pretty deep sea, and that's because that's the only place left uh, to do the fishing. Um, but we really need to look very carefully and you have to be cautious about uh, working on this because it also popularizing the topic may just make more fishing like I said um, once you say hey don't fish way out here they may actually start to fish in even worse areas but these kind of maps uh, really help us see uh, the details about these fishing zones so you can start to see kind of the pathways uh, that fishermen you know they may just have uh, go from here to Korea uh, to Shanghai down to Hong Kong and you know that's all done within a period of a year or even less uh, you can do that in six months uh, fishing um, and that is really fun to do that um, but uh, it really really uh, fish 
uh, sometimes don't travel as far as that. You know, they like certain types of water, or they just have a little house, you know, their, their little coral reef or whatever they're fishing in. So uh, it's really important to look at this. And I wanted to emphasize there is zones uh, for collaboration. So, for example, this part here um, is really actually kind of similar to this part here. So Indians can work with this area, and they can actually collaborate here. And on these internal areas, to this diamond shape is very important. And these deep sea areas, um, there's definitely areas for collaboration across countries and across different zones, uh, as well as these very interesting pathways uh, that not only fishermen may travel, uh, hopefully they don't travel these ways, but uh, the fish themselves would love to travel along these regions. Uh, so you can kind of see uh, some of those really special ways um, that the fish may want to travel. And you can see just how amazing all this is. So here I kind of emphasize uh, the soil map. So you can start to see how the land-based animals uh, may actually uh, be involved in feeding uh, the water-based animals. And you can see these light blue areas. I just didn't emphasize it enough in the discussion, but wow, you can see any kind of little bacteria that affects an animal here is going to go really far out into the ocean. And you can see just the Philippines, uh, how important all these different pathways are. And I try to emphasize that here as well. Um, this is a geological map, so you can kind of combine the soil map. Here you can see these little veins uh, becoming very important, but now you also see uh, how the geology plays a role uh, in the ocean, right? Um, and it would be nice to even get a geological map uh, for the ocean floor as well, um, because that can tell us quite a bit about the types of animals uh, and fish that like to be there. So I tried to emphasize there's different routes uh, that were visible on each of these, uh, like here you can say, well, the fish like to travel through here, um, but you can actually see um, it's actually quite a different area because some of the land-based animals and maybe different pathways um, that we need to consider uh, that we didn't quite see. Um, and then here's the electrical map um, that I really wanted to emphasize um, to look at. And then this is the population. So you can see just how vast this population pressure is, particularly from India. And that's why I wanted to emphasize um, the population is huge in India. Uh, and that basically prevents Africa. Africans don't want to move to India because it's overpopulated in India, and that's preventing Africans potentially from trying to move further out. But it's really important to think about what's going on in Bangkok, Ho Chi Minh, Hanoi, all these places. And you can see just how huge the population is in Manila. Uh, and that is no joke because they've deforested almost everything. We're going to see the deforestation map here. So look at what happened here. Uh, they've actually deforested the most valuable uh, areas for the uh, animals, so it's actually the Philippines bears huge responsibility um, as well as Indonesia, um, because Indonesia has all these islands, um, and basically people are moving uh, even more out there, so it's just this map, I could spend hours and hours discussing uh, years, this is going to be a map that we're going to be looking at for the next thousand years or more, um, it's not going to be moving so this is kind of the way it looks for a while, um, so anything that you do to help here is going to be very important. And it's important to understand that this pathway here um, is very important um, and all these different areas. So um, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this study. Um, please let me know um, if you really like to uh, discuss any of these details. Um, and there's just so much to look through here. Um, we just went through just so much information um, and I'm just so grateful. Um, and I really hope uh, this will help save the lives of so many fish. Um, and I would love to go even get a little pet fish, a tiny fish for my house. I'm thinking about getting one um, so I can talk with it about all kinds of things. Anyway, thank you so much. Have a great day.